hello friends so in this section we will discuss uh, the thyroid function test so these tests are used to find out uh, different conditions of thyroid gland to find out thyroid stats in the body so we will see different cases of hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism subclinical hypothyroidism and other cases so how mm, these tests can help us to differentiate between different conditions okay so in thyroid function test so some important tests that we know so first is the uh, thyroid stimulating hormone so we need to find the levels of serum tsh now this these levels are very important because they give us an idea about the level of thyroid hormones in the body like if there are less thyroid hormones and so there will be less feedback inhibition of the pituitary tsh will be more okay similarly if there is less tsh in the body so there can be two cases uh, either tsh less tsh is being produced or maybe thyroid hormones are more in number so the feedback inhibition is more now serum so we, we will discuss different conditions uh, we will see different combinations of tsh and t3 and t4 and how they are associated with different diseases okay so we need to measure serum tsh levels before that in t3 and t4 levels so t3 and t4 they can exist in two forms so they are either available in free form in the plasma or they are available in the bound form bound form means they are bound to proteins and we know different pro proteins which uh, bind to thyroid hormones so these are thyroid binding globulin thyroid binding globulin another is called as transthyretin and albumin okay almost 70 percent binds to thyroid binding globulin 20 percent to albumin and 10 percent to transthyretin this is the bound form and it's actually free form that's responsible for producing the effects of thyroid hormones that means our main concern should be about the free form of these hormones not the bound form plus bound forms are not we cannot trust the bound form of the hormone because this form bound form changes. okay for example if the protein content in the body if protein content increases then the bound form of thyroid or the total thyroid t thyroid t3 t4 levels they also increase okay they also increase if pro total proteins in for example in pregnancy or for example in a female who is using ocps so the total protein level will increase so total t3 and t4 will also increase which includes bound form of t3 but in this case the free t3 levels they are going to remain constant so our main focus in the thyroid function test is on the free t3 and t4 levels okay they help us to distinguish between different uh, conditions associated with thyroid they are not the total uh, total t3 and t4 levels which include bound form of t3 and t4 okay uh, so another we have thyroglobulin we have radioactive iodide uptake fnac that means fine needle aspiration cytology and radiology we'll come to all these separately okay so let's start we will start our discussion with these three together okay so let's start our discussion by drawing this table so as you can see tsh free t3 free t4 level so we'll discuss different conditions and what we'll discuss different combinations of these uh, levels different combine different values of these three entities and different conditions associated with them so first let us start with the simple one so if free t3 levels are normal free t4 levels are normal okay that means the person at all is not symptomatic free t3 is normal free t4 is normal but tsh levels are let's say increased okay that means free if free t3 t4 levels are normal that means person is going to be asymptomatic person is going to be asymptomatic but tsh levels are high that means it's a case of subclinical hypothyroidism subclinical means there are no clinical manifestations this person is asymptomatic but since tsh levels are high if tsh levels are high that means feedback inhibition is low which is seen in hypothyroidism but it's a subclinical no clinical manifestations at all okay so the first case is subclinical hypothyroidism and these are the values of these tsh uh, free t3 and t4 now let's discuss another condition okay if free t3 levels are low and free t4 levels are low we know this is a case of hypothyroidism because t3 levels are low t4 levels are low okay so let's discuss two cases of hypothyroidism so in person number one t3 levels and t4 levels are low in person number two t3 levels are low t4 levels are low 
that means this person is going to be symptomatic again this person is going to be symptomatic and they are going to present with the symptoms of hypothyroidism okay but there's difference in tsh in one individual tsh levels are high in other individual tsh levels are low so what's the difference so if if you have studied the last lecture properly you can easily uh, answer this question if free t3 levels free t4 levels are low but tsh levels are high that means problem is in the thyroid gland so it's synthesizing less thyroid hormones that means t3 and t4 levels are low but tsh levels are high so it's a case of primary hypothyroidism primary hypothyroidism so it can be because of any case okay it's a primary hypothyroidism primary hypothyroidism but if tsh levels are also low that means it's actually these tsh levels which are low which lead to decrease in t3 and t4 so it's a case of secondary hypothyroidism secondary hypothyroidism okay primary hypothyroidism secondary hypothyroidism okay these two important cases okay this is a case of primary hypothyroidism and secondary hypothyroidism now let's go to another condition if t3 levels are high and so are t4 levels t3 levels are high t4 levels are high but okay before that let me tell you another one if t3 levels are normal t4 levels are also normal but tsh levels are low it is similar to this condition except tsh levels are low in this case in that in subclinical hypothyroidism tsh levels are high that means this person is going to be asymptomatic asymptomatic and this condition is called as subclinical hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism okay the person does not have any clinical manifestations but he is uh, but he has hyperthyroidism because tsh levels are low now another condition if tsh levels are high t3 levels are high t4 levels are high and tsh levels are also high that means all the three entities they they are increased that this is a case of thyrotoxicosis thyro toxicosis or what's called as hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism so all the three values are increased so so uh, tsh free t3 and t4 okay subclinical hypothyroidism sub uh, primary hypothyroidism secondary subclinical hyperthyroidism and hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis okay now let's go to other so these were the number one number two and number three from this list number one number two okay not number three so we are done with the first two number one and number these two are number two okay now let's go to another important marker thyroglobulin levels okay thyroglobulin we know thyroglobulin is a precursor molecule it's a precursor required for synthesis of t3 and t4 now all you need to remember about this is increased levels of thyroglobulin in serum is a marker for thyroid cancer okay it's a marker for thyroid cancer increased levels of serum thyroglobulin is a marker for thyroid cancer okay let's go to other test it's called as radioactive iodine uptake okay see we know in in our body the iodide channel is present in the thyroid gland that means uh, most of the iodine if we take uh, iodine along with a glass of water uh, maximum amount of this iodine is going to go into the thyroid gland that means and passes through the circulation thyroid gland is going to take up this uh, iodine because we already studied during synthesis of thyroid hormones on the basolateral side of the thyroid follicular cell which is in contact with the blood all there is a channel for iodine uptake sodium iodide symphoter and that's going to uh, cause uptake of this iodine so uh, so what we do we give radioactive iodine that's iodine 131 uh, is given along the glass of water and uh, after some time all that iodine will be taken up by the thyroid gland and since it is radioactive so we'll be able to visualize it uh, once we scan the thyroid glands okay so if we scan the thyroid gland uh, i hope you can understand this is the thyroid gland okay this is the thyroid gland you can see here this part here the gland has taken more iodine so more concentration of iodine is in this area now this 
is called as hot nodule this is called as hot nodule and this hot nodule is seen when the when there is increased capacity for synthesis of thyroid hormone that means in this area there will be uh, increased synthesis of thyroid hormone so it can be it's a it can be a case of thyrotoxicosis okay so increased capacity is hot nodule okay and if there is a decreased capacity as you can see there is uniform this is almost uniform but in this here in this area shown by the arrow there is less intensity of black color that means this is a cold nodule okay cold nodule cold nodule okay so hot nodule is seen in case of hyperthyroidism so we can say it's seen in case of graves disease graves disease or in other causes of thyrotoxicosis or in toxic nodular goiter okay but cold nodule cold nodule so cold nodule is seen in case of hypothyroidism so it can be seen in case of hashimoto's disease hashimoto's disease it can be seen in case of uh, myxedema etc so this is a cold nodule okay basically seen hot nodule is seen hyperthyroidism cold nodule is seen in hypothyroidism okay now let's go to another test that's called as fine needle aspiration cytology so basically we use a fine needle and we aspire the material from thyroid gland and on uh, we examine it under the microscope and this is uh, useful to find a, a mass in the thyroid gland so if there's a mass in the thyroid gland what we can do is we can do a fine needle aspiration cytology and we'll be able to see different follicles okay if we are able to see follicles if we are able to see a lot of thyroid follicles then this mass is a that means it's a functional mass okay now this functional mass it can either be benign or it can be malignant this cannot be differentiated on the basis of fine needle aspiration cytology whether this mass is because in benign mass same follicles will be present and malignant mass same follicles will be present these two are differentiated on the basis of metastasis okay they are differentiated on the basis of metastasis t now in the radiology we can actually scan the thyroid gland using usg or ct and we can look for uh, for a mass or some other abnormality in these glands so these are different thyroid function tests uh, and important ones are uh, the radioactive iodide uh, radioactive iodine uptake hot nodule cold nodule hot nodule seen in hyperthyroidism cold seen in hypothyroidism and these values of tsh t3 and t4 so that's it about thyroid function test